During this holiday season, give your loved ones a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of their life. Torpedo Pot is the only affordable self-growing flower pot that ensures your future food survival. All you do is add soil, seeds, and seedlings to the flower pot and watch your plants grow. Torpedo Pot can grow nutritious food in such abundance and variety that you can produce more food than your local farm. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Greetings brothers and sisters, my name is Osi the Bone Child and today let's take a look at the most culturally civilized African kingdom that flourished under a paralyzed king. A paralyzed king, yes, you heard me right. Located between the Kansai and the Sankuru rivers in the southern region of the Democratic Republic of Congo is the Kuba Kingdom. One of the powerful and beautiful civilizations that flourished from the 17th to the 20th century. Migrating from the distant north to their current location in the 16th century, the Kuba Kingdom was basically isolated due to their geographical location, and hence they were largely not as much affected by slave trade as several others were. The kingdom has since the 16th century been headed by various kings that belonged to the Bushongo clan. But the one who stood out amongst them was Kot Mabink, the paralyzed king who ruled between 1919 to 1939. According to African-American researcher William Shepherd, the king, who was a polio victim and overweighed, used the wheelchair given to him by the American Presbyterian Congo Mission to serve as a throne. Later in his life, Mabing professed his Christian faith, making scores of prominent Cuba men and women to follow suit at a time when several others believed in other supernatural powers such as spells and witchcraft. One other remarkable change he made was that he banished the idea that servants of a deceased king should be buried along with him. History says that hands and legs were cut off to serve as a cushion for the coffin once a king died. Mabink intimated that sticks of calm wood should be used instead. During his turn also, the Kuba kingdom made up of the other tribes such as the Ngendes, the Ngongos, the Showers, the Bengs, and the Ngombes developed as one of the artistic peoples of Africa. Apart from benefiting from advanced techniques from neighboring Americans as well as the new crops introduced from Americans such as cassava, maize, tobacco, and beans, Cuba became very wealthy which led to great artistic works being commissioned by the Cuban nobility right from the 1900s. As a German historian, Leo Frebenius put it, in 1906, when I penetrated the Kansai, Sankuru territory, I found again villages of which the main streets were edged on each side with the four rows of palm trees and several feet and of which the decorated huts, each in a charming way, were artworks as well. He was astonished, surprised and amazed to the fullest. No man who did not wear some precious iron or copper weapons, blade inlaid with the handle covered with snake skin. Each cup, each pipe, each spoon was an art object perfectly worth it to be compared to the European Roman style creations. Known for their beautiful textiles made of vegetable fibers, lafias, bark and palm tree leaves, Cuba, till to date, has evolved into the most artistic and highly technological indigenous growth makers of Africa. Women continue to employ distinctive hand-stitched embroidery or cut pearl techniques to establish 
and embellish the plain clothes that were traditionally woven by men. Aside from making beautiful cloth, the Kuba also produced carved wooden masks and figurine, figurines plus headrests and divination oracles. These special objects are often traded to surrounding areas and priced for export. It is documented that due to their loyalty in the West, Royal Kuba textiles and artifacts are highly sought by Western collectors. They also occupy permanent exhibition halls in the prominent art museums in New York, Holland, Paris, and Brussels. In the 17th century and 18th centuries, the Central African interior witnessed the flourishingness of three large-scale multi-ethnic states, Cuba discussed as, we, as in this video, the Luba and the Lunda, imported crops and technologies as well as new model of leadership promoted strong centralized governments that subsequent neighboring chiefdoms and legislated trade routes, increasing the wealth and relative stability of the region. Client states incorporated into these empires via warfare and strategic alliances acquired the political system and cultural tradition of their overlords. Art forms and insignia associated with imperial rule spread throughout the region. That is it about the most culturally civilized African kingdom that flourished under a paralyzed king. And hey, please come in the comment section and let me know what you learn from the story. My name is Osi, the Bone Child, and until next time, I'll be seeing you brothers and sisters in another video. But until then, please don't forget to subscribe and take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.